An emotional goodbye to Minnesota, but hello, Hollywood. One of my faves, new Charger, Eric Hendricks in studio here in L.A., ready, ready to stop run offenses all across the league. Uh, and what a division. You think people settle into their career nine years in one place? Maybe they want to take it easy, maybe head to the, oh, I don't know, the AFC South. No, we're going to go to the AFC East. We're going to deal with uh, Patrick Mahomes and company for the rest of time. That's okay. We're going to have Alan Lazard uh, joining us live from Live. apparently. What? And are the Titans looking to climb up the NFL draft board for a quarterback? Dun, dun, dun. Jim Wyatt pops by with the latest. UConn wins the national championship. Dominant run. They got a win. Finished the job. They took care of business. San Diego State, 76-59. And it really prepared me for a sweet night's sleep. Fell asleep on the couch to this one. I'm sure you did too. If you did not, if you stay, if you kept your eyes open, especially on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast falling asleep. John Rothstein says he doesn't sleep in April. He doesn't sleep till my eye. I, I, in fact, do. I, in fact, do sleep in April. That's what it turns out to uh, be. And now a nice breezy, cool win for them and very special. Their fifth national championship in the last 24 years. And uh, a cool stat here. They are just the third team in college basketball to capture a national title while winning all of their tournament games by double digits. That, my friends, is dominance. And it's Masters time this week, and that kicks off on Thursday, April 6th. Then we've got the Derby in early May. This is a really fun time in sports and a really fun time here at FanDuel. And my question, I guess, as I sit here on a Tuesday morning, will all of this happen, the Masters, the Derby, the NBA Finals, will all of these things happen before we figure this Aaron Rodgers thing out? Like, what? Let's take a live look, people, this morning. We've got Eric Hendricks on the show. We'll have Jim Wyatt in a minute. This is a live look at Live in Miami here on a Tuesday morning. It's not really, but that's okay. We have new jet money out there on the scene. Alan Lazard, what's the latest? Oh, yeah, there's a sign there that says, stop asking me about Aaron, and he's loving it. Now, listen, and believe me, I don't want to talk about Aaron either, but I do want to say this. Like, there's a lot of people on Twitter responding to this this morning that are saying, that's so lame of him. Why would he write? Do you think he walked into Liv and said, hey, Dave Grutman, make me a sign that says this? No. Let me explain to you what happens at a club. You get the table, you order the bottle, the sparkler comes out. It's really not any different from when you're celebrating your birthday at Olive Garden and the entire wait staff comes out with a white chocolate raspberry cheesecake, make it to your table, clap their hands, and have some sparklers. It's the same thing. So some door guy or some bottle service girl who's a Packers fan uh, or Jet fan decided that would be a fun thing to write, and it is. And great marketing, Dave Grutman, back there with those sparklers. We thought we could do the same for some NFL players, and by we, I mean Marissa. What do we got? We cooked up some uh, other signs quickly this morning. What do we got? Uh, we got our first one coming up here. Uh, it's for the Ravens. Okay. I like a weather woman. I oh, board. let's do meteorology. This is fun board. Why are you so allergic to receivers? Oh, Think about the offense. it's not wrong. They never take a receiver. They never listen to me. I'm always talking about it. Uh, the Ravens deserve that. The Ravens deserve to think about the offense. I don't think you are wrong. What's our next one? Uh, I think we got one for Aaron Rodgers. It's a wish list. <laughs> it's a wish list. Not a list of demands. That was his response when it was not was a list Chris of demands. Well, listen, he made it pretty clear that he was not happy about that, but Lazard, Moran Cobb, mm -hmm. I think he should add, you know, don't take James Jones from us here at FanDuel, Super Bowl champion, but <laughs> if you want to, Megatron told me that he would like to play with you, why don't you call Calvin Johnson? Yeah, give Woody, him a call. Woody Johnson, Calvin Johnson. Same last name, let's make it happen. I think we got one more. Okay. I think it's a special one. What is this? I am not dating Tom Brady. That is a statement. I am not, and I, I don't want to hear the backstory, but yeah, just <laughs> leave it there. I am not, in fact, dating Tom Brady. Thank you, Marissa. Time still delivered. You. You're welcome. Uh, we did get some news. Finally, some news. One of the top free agents left on the market, according to Mr. Adam Schefter. The Ravens did make a contract offer to Odell Beckham Jr. Finally, they saw our sign. They made it happen. And I assume he probably won't sign anything until he finds out what's happening with Lamar. I wouldn't if I was uh, advising Odell. But we know the Ravens are committed to bringing him back, and I like the fact that they're making a strong longer effort to support him. That's what you need to do. You see what the Jets are doing. They didn't even have Aaron yet. You got to make Lamar feel like you're going to care about the offense. Now, I know it's ultimately going to come down to whatever the contract offer is, but the thought of playing with Odell, that's got to be fun for Lamar to think about. If you look at the Ravens' offense, health, durability, this is a big question with this group. But man, he has the potential, and this offense has the potential to be explosive on paper. So I'd like to see it happen. Of course, the Ravens have a lot of work to do with Lamar before we get to that point. Ravens, by the way, didn't have a single receiver with over 500 yards last season. I think I've said that 19 times already. Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson, who was fourth on the depth chart going into the year, was their leading receiver with 458 yards. Come on. 
do better than that. And I'd made the point here that Lamar Jackson is very young and that we think that he can't throw the ball. Or we don't know what he can do. We don't know what he can do because he's 26 and he's played in a very similar kind of offense every time. So if we take it off of his legs and maybe give him some help through his ability to get it uh, to receivers, to the right receivers, to explosive receivers that are well-suited, Sky's the limit, I think, for Lamar Jackson. So there's also some interesting reports out of Tennessee that we have to get to. So Daniel Jeremiah, who we know and love, he, if you don't listen to Move the Sticks, it's an incredible podcast, super thorough and easy to listen to. I listen to it in my car when I'm almost crashing and trying to parallel park every day. Uh, he said that the Titans might be trying to make a deal with the Cardinals to move up to that three spot, presumably to grab one of these quarterbacks. When you look at the state of the Titans right now, I kind of love this if they're able to pull it off. Listen, with the way last season came crashing down on them like sneaker waves, this team is in need of some serious retooling. They gotta take the team to the shop. It's not that it's all Ryan Tannehill's fault, right? He was playing injured, he missed some games to end the year, but at this point, we know what Ryan Tannehill is. He's a solid quarterback, he can win you games, but he's one that doesn't have a super, super high ceiling. And the Titans had the 30th ranked offense last year while paying their quarterback a lot of money. So that is not a recipe, as we all know, for sustained success. So if they make this move and they go with the rookie, you know how much they can save? $27 million. Do you know how many of Eric Hendricks' cool supercars I could buy? you know how many Dodge Vipers I could buy with $27 million? A lot. He just walked into the studio. I'm very excited. Okay. They can save that money by cutting Ryan Tannehill. And that means they can afford to keep Derrick Henry. They can take the pressure off the young quarterback. They can add pieces, begin the process of getting the roster back where it needs to be. When you look at the division right here, you've already got one young star quarterback to contend with who's looking pretty good in Trevor Lawrence. And you're about to have to deal with two more. Houston's going to grab one. Indy's going to grab one. They're both in the top five. The tables are turning quickly. Don't wait for it to happen, okay, Tennessee? You also have the chance to stick it to a division rival. You can leap in front of the Colts, stupid Colts, make them take the fourth quarterback off the board. That's ugly. That would suck for Ursa and company. You can go and get your guy for the future and really jumpstart the entire retooling process of this. So let's really quickly bring in one of the best reporters in the business. He's covering the Titans and has since they became the Titans back in 1999. Jim Wyatt, how have you been? I'm doing great, Kay. I hope you're doing well this morning. I am. It's, there's exciting stuff going on. You just heard my argument about what I think the Titans should do, make it interesting, uh, say, give a little uh, to a division rival. So we're hearing some of these rumblings. What do you make of that? Well, I think when you've got a, you know, you're in a, the 11th spot and you've got four quarterbacks in this draft that are considered first rounders, some of them top 10, then you've got to do your due diligence. And I think that's what the Titans are doing. I think with the new general manager, it's hard to really predict what he's going to do because he's never done it before. He was we, we got to keep in mind he was with the 49ers in 2021 when they made a very similar move. They were sitting at number 12 and they moved up to number uh, three at that point. And here the Titans are sitting at number 11. We're talking about pick number three. So I know where he's been. Uh, I know they're doing some work. Uh, you know, certainly been a lot of buzz. I know Daniel Jeremiah is not a guy who breaks a lot of nope. news. So he, he throws something out. He's usually right on. So I don't doubt that the team is doing his due diligence, how much, you know, validity there is or how serious it is. I think, I guess time will tell on that. Do you have a feel for which of these quarterbacks might be the best fit or might be liked by this organization the most? Well, he's been everywhere. I mean, Rand's been to Ohio State. You know, he we went to Kentucky. You know, he went to Alabama. He was went to Florida to see all those guys. Mike Vrabel's been on some of those trips. You know, they, Mike Vrabel was in Knoxville to watch him mm. and Hooker. So they, you know, not only the early you know guys considered top ten, but also they're looking at uh, at Hinton Hooker who played up the road. So I think they're looking at all of them, and now it's just a matter of uh, you know having pro day visits and uh, you know getting guys getting to know guys better to figure out who the best fit is. And maybe through this whole process, you figure out one of these guys is not what you want to do. And you want to ride with Ryan Tannehill for another year. But, uh, you know, you're not, you don't want to be in this position a lot to pick a quarterback and you better make sure you're right uh, if you do it. Especially when your division rivals are getting young quarterbacks and making those moves now. And I do feel like we know what the ceiling for Ryan Tannehill is. And we he took a huge leap from when he got moved from uh, the Adam Gase world of the Dolphins. But now it's t time to maybe potentially look elsewhere. And I think it's what they're doing. And then there's this Derrick Henry thing, right? I would like to keep him around if you have a young rookie. I think that would help. But we're hearing trade rumors about him. I'm looking at the numbers. He's really not showing signs of falling off. 
I hate this narrative. Guys are on 28, even at the running back position. He turned 29 in January. He just put up under 2,000 total yards last year, the second best output of his entire career. Do you think we see him moved at some point before the draft? Well, on the, you know, on the record, you know, Rand Carlton has said that the Derrick Henry, you know, shopping him, that was all an erroneous report. Uh, with that said, I mean, you, you, as you mentioned, Kay, I mean, I, I think there is, you know, a school of thought about running backs as they get older. I went through it with, with Eddie George. I went through it with Chris Johnson. Mm -hmm. I know Derrick Henry's in the last year of his contract. You've got to factor into a lot of things. And and while Rain has said, you know, nothing uh, has transpired as far as trying to shop him, also went through this last year with A.J. Brown where, you know, I felt like he was going to be on the tight roster and then it comes draft you know, draft weekend, and, and he got moved. Sitting here today, April the 4th, I mean, I, I think Derrick Henry, you know, certainly is on this roster now. I kind of expect him to be on the team this year, but things change quickly. He's been the face of the franchise. He's been this team's best player. Fan base could not imagine what things would be like without him. And, uh, and I think Rand Carthon and, and Derrick Henry will sit down and get on the same page, and things will be worked out moving forward where they're see, where they see eye to eye. We appreciate your time, Mr. White. 1999, huh? Been a long time. Yep. It's, been a long, it's, it's about time to win one, don't you think? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, so, I'm, and I'm yep. rooting for you to do that. What do you want to happen before I let you go? As a fa as you know, obviously you're not a fan, but with that little voice that pulls at your heartstrings a little bit. Yeah, I mean it's different because I did I covered this team for the Tennessee and the National the newspaper from '99 to 2014, and now worked for the team in 2015. Obviously, you don't want to see the team win, but work needs to be done, and this team has done some retooling. You know, let go let go of guys like Taylor Wan and Ben Jones and Robert Woods and Zach Cunningham and Bud Dupree. It's gonna be a different team, and now the team's in the process of of trying to identify players in free agency that are good fits. They need to do the same thing in the draft. They need to get better at receiver. They need to get faster as a team. Team. And yeah, they need to be able to compete with some of these teams in the AFC that can score a lot of points. So that's what needs to happen. Got to get good on defense too. But uh, yes, you do have uh, to get good wonder, on defense. Yeah, a lot of people wonder if there's a rebuild or they blowing it up yeah. or, or they tanking. That's not happening. They're just trying to. I think I call it a reboot, and I think that's what's going on right now. We appreciate you, Mr. Jim Wyatt. Thank you for and, and enjoy the who knows what's going to happen ahead of the draft. Maybe there'll be a trade. Maybe the Colts get Lamar. Maybe y'all get Lamar. Maybe you stick with Ryan Tannehill. Who knows? We appreciate the insights from him. And coming up, we have a very special guest in studio, Eric Kendricks, linebacker. Well, I have to get this right. For the Los Angeles Chargers, you're back in Cali, bro. We love it. We're live in studio with Eric Kendricks next. Kendricks left his feet like Superman. Eric Kendricks with the interception. Oh, you heard the analyst scream. Kendricks diving forward. He's got the pick. The Kendricks, not to be fooled. Haunting. A revolving door of Chicago Bears quarterbacks from my hometown, year in, year out. Our guest here in studio played linebacker for eight seasons for the Minnesota Vikings. He was an all-pro. He's a pro bowler. He just signed with the Los Angeles Chargers. I got my helmet back there, right? Yeah, we love it. Uh, and this is where you were a stud for the UCLA Bruins. We've got Eric Kendricks in the studio. How are you? Good. That, that uh, helmet was a nice touch. I walk in like, you know, it's the little things. Just, just the little things. It's, it's, it's the little things that make you feel comfortable. You know. <laughs> we're so happy to have have you here. We have a lot of news to get to. Listen, uh, the biggest news is that you're no longer wearing purple. It's blue, baby blue, because you're having a boy. And we just heard that that's the big news. Sure, you're a charger. We'll get to that. But uh, talk to me. And I think we have your gender reveal here. Talk yeah. me through this. Um, obviously, didn't know what to expect. Look how cold it is. Uh, and didn't know if the blue was going to show up on camera. But I think you can tell by my wife's reaction that I mean, that looks she was staged. excited. That looks planned, Eric. No, it's it so wasn't. Perfect. It wasn't. Um, it was. Uh, ah! We kind of just set up a camera and and uh, and did, did it ourselves. So it was nice. Is nice it, and private. Is it stressful? Like you've been in the NFL for so long. There's so many moments of high stress. Like, what is it like knowing this is your first baby boy? I know. It's just like a lot of unknown. But I, I feel like. I feel like I got a pretty good moral compass, so I think I'll do all right. You know, just maybe change a couple of diapers here and there. Are you going to be a diaper changer? <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is be. a big diaper changer. Really? I, I believe that I have to be. You know, I don't think my wife will let me um, get away with that. Who in your locker room will you, would you go to for advice? And let's talk even just Vikings, because you know the locker room so well. Like, Who would be the person you would take dad advice from? Man, there's so many great dads in the locker room. Um, I think off the top, I think uh, Jordan Hicks is one of them, um, Josh Martellus. 
you know, Kirk Cousins, um, Harrison Smith, you know, those guys are, you know, the fathers that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, who's the person, former team or now current team, that you would least trust to babysit your baby boy? <laughs> I remember with the Vikings, they did that thing with yeah. Stephon Diggs, and like nobody's <laughs> trusting Stephon Diggs to date their sister or whatever. Who was the least trustworthy babysitter of the bunch? Um, I just don't. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Jet. Like, Justin, I don't really? know. Really? Like, I'm not saying that he's, playing, not, he's not good with kids. He's over there he's playing with cod kids. while it's the kid's like, feeding themselves. I think at this point of his life, I don't know. Yeah. Let's well, see. Justin Jefferson, that's what we call Jet. Okay, got it. Okay, let's get into some of this because we have some gender reveals, teammates included, sports guys, and I want to have you rate them because yours was perfect. I don't know okay. why. Why? We watched it as a, as a production group and we're like, it's so understated. It's not over the top. It's not like a ton of hoopla. It's beautiful. It's charming. But let's take a look Appreciate at this. That. Yeah, let's take a look at this first one together. I believe this is Kirk Cousins. Now, he almost missed that. Question mark. Let's Ooh, take a look. Yeah, see, anything athletic, <laughs> anything athletic, well, first of all, he delivered, so that's a solid eight <laughs> off the top. Okay, and that's you know, gotta be stressful. But uh, I think that anything you do athletic or, or, you know, hitting a golf ball or something like that, it's like, it, it's putting a lot of pressure on you as a dad to deliver and, and hit, a, hit a smooth uh, target or whatever, but, uh, you know, he got okay. it right. He got it right. He had a boy. You didn't pick him as the first person to get advice from, though. I noticed that. Just saying, he was like the fourth person you mentioned, not Kirk, not Kirk Cousin, who has a conversion man. Okay. Um, I heard you were a very good baseball player in high school. So let's take a look at this baseball inspired oh, <laughs> reveal attempt. <laughs> see, anything athletic, you have to, you, it puts too much pressure on who's doing the sport. And this, this case, you know, he thought that he could take a ball right here, but. Um, the coach gave him the hit and run signal, so he has to swing at everything. He didn't like the pitch. Yeah. He has to swing. You have to swing at everything. You know, it's not. It's not that kind of situation. What are we giving him? I'm giving him. I'm a. Uh, that's, that's a weird four, but. It's a weird four. Okay, we got a. Four. That's and I. I think you're. It, it, I think hit, you're it hit the guy kind. in the face, so it made it. It made it something. Very generous. How about this? I know you're into cars. Did you consider going this route? Let's take a look. At uh, oh. Well, that's subtle. I think that I think that when you have a kid, you're trying not to catch a case. Um, I think that staying out of jail is, you know, this is good advice. ideal. And uh, I think this is going to put you in jail. Did Jordan so, Hicks tell you that? I mean, that's, you know, that's solid. I think that's a, I think that's a zero. zero. That's a big zero. Uh, and <laughs> yikes, I didn't, I didn't vet these before I saw them. Uh, and, and listen, and here's this last one. And this one's famous, I think. Listen, it's hard to hide what you're rooting for. Nate Burleson taught me that. If you have a lot of girls, then you want that, you gotta keep trying for that boy. So this is uh, Gordon Hayward, NBA star, who's got two girls, gorgeous girls walking around. Look, <laughs> he doesn't look excited. See, and then that's the thing about gender reveals too. It's like, you know, it, it builds up anticipation and you know, sometimes you can get let down, but hey, I think that he was happy. He's just yeah, was he? A little bit, you know. Do you think he's trying for another baby? Potentially. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what are we gonna give him, Gordon Hayward? I'll give him, him uh, just for the reaction. I'll give him, a, you know, a six. A six. It wasn't you're, too much. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't too much, but very kind. I mean, hey, I like the fact that he just kind of did it with his family. Okay, you know? I like that. Let's talk about Minnesota. You penned. Not to be serious here, like a pretty emotional letter mm -hmm. about what it meant to you, your time there, and how you're always going to have a little Minnesotan in you. What does that mean? It just means a lot, you know. Um, obviously, uh, spent eight, eight years there. You know, I, I, I developed as a man there. Um, just went through a lot. So, the experiences I have with my teammates and, and, and the coaches and, and the staff and you know my relationships around the city. Uh, it just meant a lot, and and I didn't realize that that's kind of what I was leaving as well. So uh, I had to go back and like say something a little bit. I, I didn't want to do it at first. Kept saying no, kept saying no, kept saying no, and then um, it felt right, and I, I felt like it was the right thing to do. My bond with the Minnesota's fan base is that I call them the most tortured fan base. <laughs> I've just said that over. Just so good, quality teams, good like studs, and it never happens. <laughs> and it's always so close. Minnesota miracle, all that, and it never happens. What is you, like? What makes this fan base so special to you? They're just loyal. You know, um, I feel like they just uh, they just showed me love. That you know, from the from the jump, um, embraced me. Um, it was a good time. You know, I feel like I never played in a uh, a game that wasn't sold out in Minnesota. So that was that was pretty cool to have that experience. What are you gonna miss the most? Not the weather. I'm gonna miss my my teammates for sure. You know, I feel like I feel like football is fun. Um, you know, everything about the cities are fun, but like at the same time, like it's always about the locker room, 
and, and things like that. So that's what that's probably going to be it. Uh, as the football gods would have it, you're facing the Vikings this year. Do you know that? Yeah, that's crazy. You're you know, facing them <laughs> in Minnesota. I uh, I. I didn't realize that. I don't know anything, so I just kind of signed up. You know what I mean? Let's play football. <laughs> and um, and someone was like, "You're playing the NFC North," and I was like, "I'm playing the same. Div I'm playing everybody in the NFC North. Yeah, everybody. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not leaving the division essentially. So it's gonna be cool to be uh, have a whole new field, but at the same time, you know, I'm gonna have a lot of familiarity with with a lot of the teams we played, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably have some uh, some local tips and keys and, and stuff What is like that, that. going to feel like to go back to Minnesota and play there? Really think about it. We don't know what week it is, but come on. It's only right. Yeah. I feel like it's Really? Only right. yeah. Are you going to just go? <laughs> Poor Kirk Cousins. Oh, gosh. I feel like he's going to have it coming for him. Uh, which team do you feel like you know the best in that division? Um, like, if you had to pick one to play right now, would it be my, my measly Bears? Do I know the best? No, just that you, like, if you could pick to play one of them three times this year, who would you, which one would you pick? Do you want to be chasing fields all around? No. I don't know. It's hard. I, I, I wouldn't be doing it. I'd be watching you do it. It's hard. What's Green Bay's situation? Good question. What do you think it is? I don't know. What are you hearing? Alan Lazard was at Live, the, Live last night, and they oh. were showing the thing that said, don't ask me about air. I don't know what's going on there either. I feel like this is the most plugged in I've been with football in a while. So. Really? Mm -hmm. I, think it's, um, I think it's Jordan Love. Wow. So who, would you, so who would you like to play? Um... <laughs> I feel like it's a loaded question. <laughs> it is, like, who would you, I want to play the Vikings, honestly. Really? Yeah. It's just because, just because of the, my history there and everything. Listen, Bobby Wagner went went back up against. He's back with Seattle, but he went up against and he crushed. He went off. He had this, really yes emotional, amazing game when he faced them. So I would hope that that would be the same for you. Um, how does it feel to be a Charger? What's the vibe so far? The vibe is great. Um, I feel like it was just so crazy. You know, it was like a blur. Everything that had happened. So. To, for me to be back in LA, you know, for me to be, you know, um, back in the blue and gold, you know, it's a different, different blue and gold from UCLA, but um, it's it's right. I'm about to have a child, you know, family support systems kind of out here in California, so it's a blessing, you know. I feel like all the stars are aligning. I was kind of nervous heading into free agency because I've never been in that situation, yeah. but um, ultimately, I think that this is the right the right move, and we have a great quarterback and and a lot of a lot of studs on the team, so. Um, I'm ready to ready to do it. Speaking of great quarterback, let's get to this, guys. Uh, and listen, you're, he's he's now your teammate, okay? But this is the last time I think we're ever going to be able to show this play, talk about this play, because Eric Hendricks is now wearing that lightning bolt. But take me through this play right here, because boy, boy, oh boy, week ten. Yeah, I don't even like. I think obviously, I think I had the middle of the field some type. I don't know if it was cover two or whatever, but. Uh, I see him peeking at. Um, peeking, peeking <laughs> look at. how cool you look! You the so helmet came well. off. I'm just like. Mm. No, you pretended it didn't happen. There yeah. was no. You were just like, what? I just. But I woke I, up like this on the 10 yard line after pick, picking off Justin Herbert. I saw him peek at Keenan <laughs> Allen early, and then I was like, oh, he's about to go at him, and I kind of curled back with him um, down the middle, and and I made it. I don't know. Yeah, look at him. You hey, just do like a hair mouth flip. Peace out. I wish I would have like kind of scored, even though they called it down when I got tagged. But the highlight would have looked better if I ended up in the end zone. Have you, you talked know? to Justin at all yet? No. No, I haven't talked to yeah. him. Yeah. What's that going to be? I mean, you you sacked him, you picked him off, but you pick off guys all the time. How do you pick guys off that easy? You have a lot of interceptions. Does it come to you? Do it comes. You I mean, I feel like I I don't know. I feel like you know I I love the the aspect of the game. You know, I love I love playing catch and throwing the ball and ball skills and things like that. So I feel like um, anytime I'm able to get the ball. I just want, I want it so bad when it's in the air. I get so like upset if it just like barely flies by if I tip it. So I want the ball at all times, you especially ball. on interception. Well, you're going to have to try to get it against pretty good quarterbacks. Did you think about that when making this decision? Not at all. Really? No. Nope. I don't like I'm not like I'm I'm a football guy, but like I'm not like a football guy. So like I got I chose the thing that was right for me, and then it was like everything else came into place afterwards. Like, oh, you know, we're playing, you know, the Chiefs twice in the division, you know, and, and I'm like, oh. Slippery like, Russell hey, Wilson. And hey, it's cool. Jimmy G. I signed up for it. Let's do it. Yeah, you want to do it. You want all that smoke. <laughs> I do. Well, how do you fit in that defense? Like, they need help stopping the run. That's what you do really, really well. And, I mean, they, people ran all over them last year. Like, how do you fit amongst the Khalil Max and the uh, the Boses of the world and the Der Derwin James? Like, that's a solid group. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I fit right 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 now as you speak, though, but I think that I do bring a lot to the table, and um, I'm not going to try to do too much. I'm going to show up and uh, just be who I am, and, um, you know, hopefully that, you know, I, I, could, I could 
help help everybody out. Yeah, we are wearing number six next year. Why? So I almost changed the number six in Minnesota. Um, I think when you know I said, oh, I decided not to. I said if I ever change teams, I'll try to get six. So as, as soon as I got you know, you know with the Chargers, I was like, man, I'm gonna try to get number six. And Dustin Hopkins had number six, yeah. so I messaged him, you know, um, saying, "Hey, I'm coming back to my home state. It would mean a lot for me to have number six. And um, we you came were six yeah, your whole my college my whole career, career, my whole college, almost my whole college career. But we came up with a cool idea that, um, you know, I was going to donate to his foundation, which him and his wife Gabby started, and um, it's to help, you know, kids with special needs and families oh, with special amazing. needs and. Um, him, his son is, is inspired by his son who's on the autism spectrum. So, I mean, when he told me that, I, I was just like, this is, this is amazing. Like, I would rather, you know, I want to donate my money. I want to, like, this is, this is something great for me to get the number and spread awareness. So I want to, you know, encourage other people, Chargers fans, NFL fans, to donate as well. Oh, Chargers fans yeah. are a, a, a mighty fan base when it comes to supporting their team. So I think yeah, that so really think, beautiful. I think that it was a great situation. You know, I think that, um, you know, I, I just didn't want to come in and, you know, take the number. I know he's a vet and things like that. So um, I think that us working together and doing this for the, for the great, for a greater good is, 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 Best case scenario. Amazing. So we'll get that. I mean, I'm sure our socials all over it. We're going to get that information out on Twitter. So if you want to donate, the Wells I, Foundation. The Wells Foundation. I personally will donate. We'll get that, and that's why you got drawn to the number six. I love that. We were, we were talking about the NFC North, you know, and, and Aaron Rodgers and all of that. What was it like? What's like your best Aaron Rodgers memory? My best Aaron Rodgers memory. I feel like I have uh, so many close, crazy games with him, and. I think it's not even a, it's not even like the the games or the outcomes, the memories. It's the little chess matches between like before the snap. Ooh, like what does where, that mean? It's just like he's calling up, he's calling something, he's changing the protection, he's checking to the receiver, saying something to him, and we're just kind of like, you guys are like trying trying to decipher things, figure things out. Sometimes it works for your for you, and sometimes it doesn't. But I think those are the those are the cool things that when I when I came into the league that I got addicted to immediately and I um, fell in love with. So he's just super. Is he like the most cerebral quarterback? You would say like the one that tries to mess with you the most. He's up there moments? because I think that he has so much you know command and control over the offense and confidence and, and a lot of other things. But um, um, he's up there for sure. Is he mean or is he like funny out there? He's I can never tell. He's competitive. competitive. He's not though. mean. He's competitive. Um, I don't know. Doesn't he's, he like, he's Aaron sometimes Rogers. I feel like he looks at people like, and he just, like he just kills you with his eyes. Isn't I mean, if you, do, if you do something like, if you yeah. like hold a receiver or jam a receiver or yeah. maybe hit him a little late or something like that, he's going to chirp you. He's going to get upset. Really? But most, most quarterbacks would though. Yeah. Know? We'll see how he does in New York. Oh my gosh. If that even happens. Right, we're going to take a short break here. We have more with Eric Kendricks, future dad, gender future. reveal raider, car guy, and good doer with the Wells Foundation. Wells Foundation? Is that right? Yep. Wells Foundation. Wells Foundation. Love that. We got to get that out there. Eric Kendricks is a football guy, he's a good guy, he's a pro all pro guy, and he's also a car guy. We all predicted uh, who, what kind of car you'd, we'd come in in. I said Mustang, Conrad said Porsche, Dodge Viper, this is our production staff, PT Cruiser, Pierre Thomas, that's what I used to call him, <laughs> Lamborghini, or a Sub, a Subaru. Let's take a look at the footage. We caught you, team, okay, what is this? Ooh, okay, okay. What is this? That's a GT3 RS. Um, it's the best car, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Tell it's, me about it. Um, it revs to 9,000 RPM. It's bulletproof. You can drive it to the track and drive it home. Um, it's like a race what car. What are you, you Batman? Drive. You need a bulletproof uh, race car? Like it's, just like, it's naturally aspirated. How about a Prius? It sounds good. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I love all cars, but that what, one has a What kind of car do you think heart. I drive? <laughs> I feel like you drive, hmm. Now, from New, I come from New York. I was like, my first, this is my first real driving here. Okay. What do you think I'm driving around, uh, around LA in? God. I say like a, a BMW. Mm, no, no, but close. A Mercedes. <laughs> no, a little close. I have the car everyone has, like a, the tiniest little Rover, just like okay. the tiniest little one that I just beat bop around uh, in traffic and cry when I'm trying to parallel park. Okay, but you're very passionate about cars. We know that. You actually work on them. Where did this passion come from? I started working on cars like probably two, three years ago. Um, I've always wanted to do it. Um, I always had the passion to do it, but I didn't have the resources. So um, I feel like. I met a cool couple, bunch of cool people who invited me into their garage and kind of went from there. And I've been working on uh, cars with my buddy Carter, and he, you know, helped fixing up my my grandpa's old Dodge Viper, and um, you know my Mustang that I that I have. 
kind of got my hands in that, learning just the basics and things like that. So it's a lot of fun for me. Did you steal that coat from Carter? No, my buddy Max got me this coat. See, all my friends just love, they know that I love cars and they just, that's they just love me. That's a Mercedes, right? I don't know anything about cars. I really don't. It is, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, right. I was like, it's either that or like the Star Trek logo. <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite, I don't quite know. Okay, here's what's going on. We, we uh, let's see. You, oh yeah, wait, hold on. Talk to me about the Mustang. Because the Dodge Viper is a special car too, right? But you have, yeah. this was your high school dream car. Do we have this? Why is this the dream car? Oh, um, it's that's like, the one I wanted when I was like 15 or 16. 50 Shades of Night Rider. My parents were like, absolutely not. Um, you need something else that's more reliable. But now I'm, I'm 31 and I uh, have have a little bit of, you know, changes to my name so I can do what I want. My mom can't tell me what to do, so. Eric, you can, you, can say, you, you can say you have a big bag of money. It's okay, we get it. You've been in the NFL a long time and you deserve anyway, it. Anyway, this is anyway. my dream car and uh, I was able to get it and, it and it brings me so much joy when I drive it. I love that. All right, let's play a fun game where I'm gonna give you a teammate and you're gonna tell me what car they would be. Like when I think of my producer, Brian, I think station wagon, wood panels, <clears> car nice. seat, that whole thing, right? Nice. Suburbs, two kids and a dog. Over the, over the lap seat belts. All of that. Perfect. Okay, first up, and speaking of that, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> this is the first player. Look over here and tell me what kind of car. So I'm gonna go Forerunner TRD Pro. Um, Toyota's reliable. Okay. I think that it has great resale value. Um, obviously, we know Kirk has great value as quarterback, and it's just durable. You know, um, tough, long lasting. Okay. You know, I, I like that, but now do we have to put like But also what? subtle and modest mm, in a, to a certain ah, degree. Is Kirk Cousins subtle and modest anymore? Can we say that about it? Let's Kirk, be honest. That's why I upgraded it to the TRD Pro, you know? It's okay. from the Forerunner to the TRD Pro. It's like. That's cool. Because it has to, what's something that's really, what's cool? What's not cool anymore? Like rims, are they not cool anymore? What's a, or like a, what's not cool? Because the chain thing is spinners, something spinners? like that. Oh, like, like the spree we wheels? We got to put something on that that's like <laughs> he thinks is cool, but nobody else <laughs> thinks is cool. And I think we're good with Kirk Cousins. All right, how about Justin Jefferson? You mentioned Jet earlier. I feel like Justin Jefferson is like a, like a Ferrari uh, Pista. Yeah. Like a Ferrari Pista. Yeah, I, I don't think know that, what that is, but it sounds yeah, right. It's a Ferrari, a little bit flashy. There oh. you go, right there. Boom. Flashy, you know, fast. I've um, got the racing stripe down the middle. You know, he always wears the pregame jewelry and yeah. uh, the glasses, so. It's a little bit flashy. You pull up, you know he's there. I appreciate the sound effects from the control room. I feel like I'm in Radiator Springs Disneyland right now. It's great. How about Khalil Mack? Ooh. I think you could go Mack truck. Yeah, see, Mack truck was obvious. I'll say like a trophy truck. You know what I mean? Like a like a trophy truck is like they go off road and you know, yeah, exactly. That's a there's, trophy truck. You know, there's ro there's bumps in the way, there's trees in the way, and yeah. it doesn't matter. It just get through it and it just it, any terrain, no matter what. Are you, fast. Excited? Are you excited to play with him? I am. Yeah, you, I've, I've, you I've seen them on the other sideline. Yeah. You wave. Always big, you know. I don't even wave. I'm yeah, just like, I wouldn't either. <laughs> He's terrifying, big, fast, and explosive. Okay, how about this one? This is this is, a, this is a versatile guy here. He can do it all. He can suplex Travis Kelsey, whatever kind of car he is. What do you got for Derwin James? I got the, the Porsche. You know, Porsche GT3 RS, kind of like the one I pulled up in. You know, durable. Okay, no, we that's, get it. That's here. different. That's a different one. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like uh, rely. You know. Performance is automatic, you know, reliability automatic, you know, uh, you can count on it for sure. Okay, uh, and bonus one, what about you? Me? Eric Kendricks, 2.0, Chargers vibes. What Listen, we got? I'm about to be a father, you know. Oh no, we're gonna go Volvo? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Audi, I'm gonna go Audi, Audi RS6, because you know, I feel like it's a station wagon vibe, but it's also super fast. Okay. Um, I can throw the, yeah, he's right there. Oh. I, can throw the, I can throw the stroller in the back, you know what I mean? but I can get to where I need to get to pretty quickly. Tell and me this, what, how can I make my car cool? Um, like or any car, like is it all that all, mine's all black, all like everything, is that cool or All no? black? Just yeah. murder it out, just yeah, like completely did. black, is what that okay? Mean? I don't know, what do I need to make it cooler? Like I don't know anything Maybe some about wheels? cars. Some wheels? Like, I can make I it cooler. To, where do I go get wheels? From the wheel store. Like exhibit, I'm my ride? <laughs> like where do I, what do I do? Do I need like an aquarium you in the back? the wheel did store. You, did, yeah. you, did, you, did you watch that show? That did. Oh, Hit my ride. ride, absolutely. Yeah. That's probably probably how I wanted to like work on cars and things like that. You're gonna get a dad mobile now. That's a dad mobile. They have like they have like racing car seats and stuff like that. For, I've been going into like a rabbit hole as far really? as like they have like Bentley, Porsche, Porsche strollers. Like I'm not gonna get them, but you know. 
Oh, Eric we'll Kendricks, see. everybody. All right, we appreciate you coming in. Tell, talk to Chargers fans. I'm really plugged in with that specific fan base. I Last year when they were taking on the Titans, I was at the game, and I was had a couple of drinks, and I was out there going, Tom Telesco, like Brandon Staley, Mike Williams, go to the Super Bowl. That was my message to them, and it was caught on film, and it was absolutely embarrassing. What is your message to Chargers fans? What's up? Um... <laughs> Come on, you're the Cali boy. Come home. <laughs> What's up? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm coming home. Um, I'm gonna work hard and let's get, let's get it done. You know, let's let's uh, let's let's make a splash. Let's. What's your message <clears throat> to Patrick Mahomes? <clears throat> What's up? Hey, sometimes less is more. You know what less I mean? Less is sometimes more. Less is more. Okay, so, I like that. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate that about you. Stop the run. That's all. I'm just stop the run. Do what you just do what you do. Just do what do, I do. Maybe, in, yeah, intercept Don't do other, too much. Don't do too little. Intercept you know? other quarterbacks. Yeah. You think Justin Herbert's got it? Is he, you know, when you, I'm not going to ask you to rank him among the AFC, uh, AFC West quarterbacks, but. Yeah, I mean, I think that. He's legit. Yeah, he's legit. Making my decision, I think that I came into play for sure. Yeah. Okay, we appreciate you, Eric Hendricks. New Charger, but you know him, an all-pro Wells Foundation. We're going to get to yes. that. Uh, and everybody, get over to NFL Shop and get the number six jersey Ooh, for Eric okay. Hendricks. Ooh, okay. Ooh, an Audi R what? RS6. RS6. Okay. Tulane running back, Tajay Spears. One thing about him is I think he might pull him out, Forte. Let me explain. Spears has a legit shot to be the first player from Tulane to go in the first three rounds of the draft since my guy, Chicago's own Matt Forte, Mr. Thousand Yard Seasons after, this is the only reason I liked being a Bears fan, and that was back in 2008 when he was taken that high. Okay, so yes, I'm not saying he's gonna be Matt Forte in the NFL, and I know there's, oh, those are some very big shoes to fill and some lofty expectations given the legendary career Forte was able to carve out in the league. I don't think Tajay is gonna shy away from the challenge though, because he has not shied away from anything in his young career. He has had to answer questions throughout his whole life with the green wave. Sure, you averaged seven yards per career or per carry and led the entire nation in touchdowns, but you did it in the American Conference. Can you do it against real competition? Those are the kind of questions he's asked. Well, he got a shot to take on a college football powerhouse in his last game of his career in the Cotton Bowl against USC. Let me show you how it went. Here it is. Tajay showed off his speed, his power, his toughness, running away from, and sometimes right through by it, the way, Trojan defenders, racking up 205 yards, four touchdowns. He helps Tulane pull off a stunning 46-45 upset over the Trojans and Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams. The Green Wave finished ninth in the AP poll to end the year behind Tajay's efforts, their first top 10 finish since back in 1998. And if that wasn't enough of a statement about what he can do, to top competition. He went to the Senior Bowl later that month. Is everybody bringing their best? Is the, what the scouts are gonna look for, the GMs, all that. He went against the best and put on a show all week long. I mean, this is just absolutely absurd. This type of change of direction. You're watching the shiftiness he has. He's saying, hey, scouts, drool. Literally drool over my versatility. Go for it. And this is all why we could see Spears as one of the top running backs off the board in this draft. So listen, it's, I think it's, Ponchatoula, I believe I learned about this this morning. Ponchatoula, Louisiana, that's where he's from. They got a nice strawberry festival, learned all about that. Move over, strawberry festival. Your new claim to fame is Tajay Spears. I think he pulls a forte. I think he's drafted highly come end of April. All right, we'll be back after this. We've got a lot more to get to on Up and Adams here on a Tuesday. Lots of fun with our guy Eric Hendricks here in studio. Hamilton joining me now. Uh, big thanks to Jim Wyatt. By the 1999 is a long time ago. A long time ago. Matt Forte, Tulane, drafted in two, uh, 1990, or no, what was it, 1998 we just said? That's a year before that. So a year uh, before the Titans were even the Titans, right? Uh, Tulane's last top 10 finish was 1998. Forte was drafted in 2008. Um but yeah, Jim Wyatt, 1999, the entire existence of the Tennessee Titans as the Titans. That's pretty impressive. Um, and I love what you had to say about Tajay Spears. He's uh, he's one of my favorite players to watch in college football last really? year. That, that display he put on in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, that display in the Cotton Bowl was so much fun. Um, really put him on the map for a lot of people that weren't as familiar with his game. And it wasn't just like the speed and all those breakaway runs that he had. It was the toughness. He's 5'10", 200 pounds, not the biggest running back you'll see, but he 
punished every single USC defender that tried to tackle him, that, tackle him in that game. You could tell he had a chip on his shoulder. He was hearing what people are saying about, you know, the level of competition, like you mentioned. And he 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 set out to prove a point, and and he more than did that. As uh, that was one of the biggest upsets we saw last year. You got to think like if you're a young player, and you know you get invited to the Senior Bowl, and you and I come from NFL Network, so we know how important that is, and how much you pump that up, and how much we know that guys like not even just the Daniel Jeremiah's, but the real guys making the decisions in those war rooms are looking at that game because you are going up against better competition than you're potentially used to, and you are also on a big pressure stage, and that's what every NFL game is and that's you know something that they're looking at and all these guys are bringing it does the do the guy has there ever been any connective research done or maybe we could do this in this dreadful off season like guys who pop off at the senior bowl how that translates to their nfl career like the mvps and yeah. the senior bowl vibes you know what i'm saying like does it like is it something that we should really circle and emphasize yeah it would be interesting to go into and you know like the game itself I think isn't as important for evaluators yeah. as the week of practice leading up to it. That's where, you know, you see these guys do their one-on-ones. Like you saw that drill from, uh, from Tajay that w- where you saw his route running, the change of direction, things like that. Like that's what the, the coaches and scouts are really looking at is, you know, the, those one-on-one drills, those competitions. Um, but I know it, it, there have been, uh, I think, a few interesting lookbacks on the guys that do win MVP of the Senior Bowl, and it's an interesting group. I know Daniel Jones is one of the prominent ones. Um, yeah. It still remains to be seen, you know, how his career is going to turn oh, out. He's but obviously be an pro. Headed, heading in a pro- positive direction right now, for sure. It wouldn't surprise me if Daniel Jones ends it with two rings and just equals Eli Manning <laughs> and just you know, their bust is next to each other in the can and it'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, Eric Hendricks is super fun to have in studio. And I, I thought he handles himself very well because he's very genuine, like just very, just pretty much tells you yeah. how he feels. But he, you can, he doesn't want to say anything bad or what he's like fun he's like a fun loving character and it's fun that that's true and then he's you know this run stuffer and like demolition man on the field for so many years to play at such a high level it's not easy to do um and I asked him in commercial break I was like what do you make of like the I'm 30 on the wrong side of 30 things because that's like you know the Vikings they like their younger linebacker they moved on from him and then you're seeing all of these guys like the Bobby Wagners future Hall of Famer you're looking at Levante David all these guys and they're into their 30s and he said to me in the break, he was like, I feel better than ever. I feel better, you know, and there's so much technology. The rules have changed. The maintenance of bodies is different. And I hope that that becomes sort of more of the trend. Like we're seeing it with quarterbacks playing longer into careers. I know it's a completely different position that's handled a completely different way and very much not in bubble wrap like that position. But like there's a longevity thing that I think is happening that I hope happens. And it'll, of course, equal out. But I think the Chargers are getting a value in Eric Hendricks. I think so too. I mean, it's not like 31 is is ancient in NFL terms either. And as you said, with the way that uh, things have changed as far as how these guys take care of their bodies, the resources they have available to them, I, I think you're right. I think we'll start to see, uh, you know, more of a trend of longevity in the NFL. Linebacker is as physically demanding. It's you know. Uh, it's not quite being a running back as far as the physical demands and the toll it takes, but it's close. And uh, you know, so it is one of the tougher positions. But yeah, yeah. with the longevity, with the way that uh, things have changed for these guys and and the way they take care of themselves, and also with Kendricks, uh, one of the biggest assets he has is his mind and um, the way that he's able to diagnose things and his instincts and and all of that. So um, you know, he's only going to get you only get better with that stuff over time as you, as you learn, as you you know, yeah. as you continue to grow throughout your career. So that's going to be such an asset for this Chargers I, defense. I thought it was. Uh interesting that he didn't not that he would take the bait on Rodgers but had not like re, like was insightful and you know but like he doesn't drag him he doesn't have like a, a one store he also didn't like take you know the, the handling of the Justin uh Herbert question I thought because he had such a great that was like an insane game an insane play like it's kind of awkward like oh that's my new quarterback he hasn't talked to him yet is that it was that weird no I mean as a defensive guy I don't yeah. know that you necessarily you know have that conversation with the quarterback, but it was interesting to hear him say, you know, Justin Herbert was a, was a significant factor in him picking the Chargers. So I think that tells you a lot, you know, those actions speak louder than words. And the fact that he chose the Chargers when I'm sure he had a lot of options. He he was, he he must've been pretty sought after on the market. There are a lot of teams that had holes at linebackers. So 
Uh, for him to choose the Chargers, uh, you know, I think that says a lot about Herbert in and of itself. It's a good call by you. All right. We, who else do we have on the show this week? Do we have Gronk this week? Oh, we have Gronk. Gronk's, Gronk's coming up tomorrow. So are we going to ask Gronk about the Brady one. Bahamas thing? I think we have to, right? Was it, was it a birthday? What were they even celebrating? I don't know. I, I have not looked too much okay. into it. Uh, I just saw Blaine Gabbert uh, out there. Um, <laughs> Edelman, Amendola, the on. usual sus. Like, is it the new derby to just go there with to Baker's Bay, Bahamas with him? Um, we love that. And we've had the, the, like, the Top Gun beach scene we're going to have to ask him about and figure <laughs> out what that's like. Uh, who else do we have coming on the show this week? Uh, we got a Super Bowl champion coming on. We got Ernest Jones, uh, the Rams linebacker, who had a big Super Bowl performance Love. against the Bengals in that win. Um, so he'll be he'll be in studio. We've got to make use of that uh, that beautiful new studio. We got it, it. It really is, and we're we'll figure it out eventually. But we're taking it day by day. It looks good though. I think Eric was impressed. Was he looks impressed, great. Marissa? Uh, we're excited about that. Did you like my uh, my thing about clubs? <laughs> And Al Lazard yes. today. People like tell me, and I'm not, I'm not bragging that I've been to a club or know, you know, the basic manners of how things work. But uh, Al Lazard catching heat this morning about that. Okay, we've got a big show tomorrow and for the rest of the week as well. And then Master starts, and it's my birthday. And I texted you, which you did not respond to me when I said we're not. No, but what did I? I texted you in the middle of the night. You just texted me at like one o'clock in the morning. Just no birthday. That was it. That's all it said. And I'm the boss, so that's what's going to happen. All right, we've got a great show for you guys tomorrow. Big thanks to Eric Hendricks. Uh, we will get that information. Taylor Few will get that out about the Wells Foundation, and I will donate and get that going for Chargers fans who, I mean, and Taylor Few snuck in here like a little mouse and changed the Bengals helmet <laughs> to a Chargers helmet. Well done. It's the little things, as Eric Kendrick said. So we'll see you guys tomorrow right here on Up and Adams with Rob Gronkowski ahead of the Masters. Thank you.